Malachi chapter 4 from verse 5. Bible says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Everybody is there? Yes, Malachi chapter 4 verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Verse 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. May the Lord bless the reading of his words. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Now these are the last two verses from the Old Testament. And in the scripture we find that there is a promise of God. And the promise is that there will be a sending of prophet Elijah. The spirit and power of Elijah. But promise comes with a condition. And the condition is actually a curse. And that is the heart of the fathers must be united with the sons and the sons with the fathers. Otherwise, the blessings, the promise that the Elijah will come forth for actually will become a curse. He says, I will smite the earth with a curse. So the last word that the Old Testament is finished with is the word curse. That's the last word used in this text. He says, I will send you the spirit of Elijah. And what he will do, he will turn the heart of the fathers to the sons. And heart of the sons to the fathers. Lest I smite the earth with a curse. Let me be honest with you. Curse remains... In the families, in the houses, when the hearts are not united, when the hearts of the fathers are drawn away from the children, when the hearts of the spouses are drawn away from each other, from sons to the fathers and fathers to the sons, daughters to the mothers and mothers to the daughters. And you find whenever there is a disunity and there's a cold heartedness of family members towards each other, we open a room, we open a door for the enemy, we open a door for the curse. Curse comes in a different form and shape. Poverty, lack. Curse of, of bitterness and hatred. They filter in. Why? Because the hearts are not together. It says, I will turn. He says, the spirit of Elijah will come. It will have one mandate, an assignment, and that it will turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and sons to the fathers. Why? It's not only the fathers, it's the mothers as well. Fathers represent the priesthood, the headship. So when we speak of the father, we speak of the whole family. Are you with me? Father is inclusive of every other member in the body. Now, we're going to dig into this prophecy because it's very, very significant. And it's, that's where the Old Testament ends. And there you find that after 400 years of silence, God would not send a prophet. And then the New Testament starts on the birth of Christ Jesus. So the last words of the Old Testament remain very, very significant for us. Firstly, you must understand that John the Baptist... In the New Testament is called the Elijah that's supposed to come. And that is according to the word of God. In Matthew 17. Turn your Bible with me to Matthew 17. I'm going to give you some scriptures to understand this, this prophetic word of Malachi. And how it implements even today. Matthew chapter 17 from verse 10. This is Jesus 
speaking to his disciple when they came down from the Mount of Transfiguration. Bible says he was speaking with Moses and Elijah. On his way back, he's speaking with the disciples and verse 10 says, and his disciples asked him saying, why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And answering Jesus said to them, Elijah truly shall come first and restore all things. Verse 12, but I say to you that Elijah has come already and they did not know him. Matthew chapter 17 and I'm reading verse 12 and I say to you that Elijah has come already and they did not know him but have done to him whatever they desired likewise also the son of man shall suffer from them verse 13 then his disciples understood that he spoke to them about John the Baptist they knew the prophetic word that Elijah will come and they've been waiting in Judaism up till now on the table of Passover they leave a cup full of wine for Elijah because the prophetic word Elijah will come still remains very intact in Jewish culture they call it the Passover cup the 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 Peshat cup and they leave it they leave the seat open and they leave the door open waiting for Elijah to come so the disciples being the Jews knew that the prophetic word that has been spoken it must be fulfilled that before the Messiah comes Elijah will have to come and Jesus said to them that Elijah has come and they understood who he was speaking about he was speaking about John the Baptist are you with me Jesus confirms again the Elijah mandate or the spirit or power or the prophetic word of Elijah upon John's life again in Matthew chapter 11 Matthew chapter 11 from verse 7 Bible says and as they departed Jesus began to say to the to the crowd concerning John Matthew chapter 11 and verse 7 what did you go out into the wilderness to see a reed shaken with wind verse 8 but what did you go out to see chapter 11 verse 8 a man clothed in soft clothing behold those who wear soft clothing are in king's palace verse 9 but what did you go out to see a prophet yes I say to you that one more excellent than a prophet for this is the one of whom it is written behold I send my messenger before your face who shall prepare your way before you truly I say to you among those who have been born a woman there has not risen any greater one than John the Baptist but the least listen to this but the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he verse 12 but from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven is taken by violence and violent taken it by force verse 13 for all the prophets and law prophesied until John verse 14 and if you will receive it this is Elijah who is to come who he who has ear to hear let him hear so in two powerful portion of scriptures Jesus confirms that Elijah that's supposed to come is John the Baptist he's the one who's the messenger who will prepare the way before me Elijah becomes that messenger prophesied he was the one carrying a mandate upon him being a prophetic voice before the Messiah and Jesus said he if you will receive it this is Elijah who is to come now I got a text problem here because John himself rejects that he's Elijah and let's let's turn in there and then we're gonna get him just laying the foundation there's a prophetic word in Malachi that Elijah will come Jesus in two powerful scriptures in the gospel of Matthew confirms John is Elijah and then John comes in the scene John chapter 1 verse 19 to 23 John rejects that he's Elijah turns your Bible with me to John the gospel of John chapter 1 verse 19 
John chapter 1 verse 19. This was John's testimony when the Jews sent priests and Levites to him from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? Verse 20. He spoke openly and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not Christ. Verse 21. So they asked him, Well, then are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Jesus said John Baptist is Elijah. John is asked the same question. Are you the Elijah? And what does he say? I am. Are you the prophet? He answered. No. Verse 22. Then they said to him. Who are you? We must give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? Verse 23, he replied, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make the way of the Lord straight as the prophet Isaiah said. Two portions of scripture Jesus said, John the Baptist is Elijah. John himself says, I am not Elijah. How do you reconcile these two powerful opinions are you with me Amen. prophetic word remains in Malachi that I will send Elijah before the coming of the Lord he will prepare the way of the Lord he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and sons to the fathers and John says I'm not the Elijah listen to this now we read from Matthew 11 when Jesus said he is the Elijah. Listen to this. Verse 14 says, and this is what I want you to draw from. How we reconcile these two different opinions and the text from the Gospels. Jesus said, if you are willing to accept it, believe it, or willing to receive it. When Jesus says, if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah. Now that turns a twist into the text. It says, if you are willing to receive it, he's Elijah. What does that mean to us? It means that Jesus said that he's Elijah, but then he says, if, he puts a condition, if you are willing to receive it. It means that suddenly now Jesus, the mandate upon John a Baptist life is not about a physical mandate that is the physical manifestation or re re uh, reincarnation or the resurrection of Elijah. Elijah cannot be resurrected because he did not die. He cannot be reincarnated because he did not see death. He says if you are willing to receive, if you are willing to receive it, if you're willing to accept he is Elijah, it means that the manifestation of that spirit or the Elijah is not physical, it's a metaphor, it's a spirit of Elijah. So as much as John says, I'm not Elijah, I'm John the Baptist. John the Baptist was born, he was born in the spirit and power of Elijah. And that's what we are going to go through. But the bulk of the text, John says, I am the messenger. And Jesus said, he is the messenger. Hallelujah. John chapter 1 verse 23 says, I'm the voice one crying out in the wilderness. Make the way of the Lord straight. This is John saying, I'm not Elijah, but I'm the one voice crying. Yes, I'm filled with the spirit and power of Elijah. I have the mandate and the spirit of Elijah upon me, but I'm John. If you perceive, you can draw from the spirit, anointing, and the power of Elijah from my life. That's why Jesus remained carpenter for Nazarene, because they knew him as carpenter. He could not perform miracles. But if you perceive, if you are willing to accept, he is Elijah, he said. Are you with me? Amen. 
So the Malachi's prophetic word was a metaphor of Elijah. Metaphorical term he used. It was not a literal one. Amen. Then Jesus, John said, I am the messenger. Everybody said the messenger. Are you with me? Then Jesus also called John the messenger. John, Matthew 11 verse 10. And we read that text. Jesus says, for this is the one whom is written. Behold, I send my messenger. Are you with me? Jesus said, John is the messenger. John said, I am the messenger. is the one who has the word. Hallelujah. He says, for this is the one of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who shall prepare your way before you. John said, I'm the messenger. Jesus says, I'm the messenger. Who is this messenger? Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. I'm giving you scripture just to lay foundation from where we're going to start building up. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. Malachi 4 spoke, spoke of the prophetic word of Elijah. Now Malachi chapter 3 speaks of this messenger. See, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. Then suddenly the Lord you, you are seeking will come to his temple. Hallelujah. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. He says, I will send a messenger who will prepare the way before me. And then I will come in the temple. Temple means God aboard. God where God will dwell. It means the church. He says before I manifest myself. Before I come. I will send somebody who will prepare my way. Who will make every crooked path straight. Now Isaiah speaks of it again. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 1 to 5. Again the same messenger. Isaiah speaks of. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 1 to 5. Should they say amen? <laughs> Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 1. Comfort, or comfort my people, says your God. Speak lovingly, lovingly to the heart of Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is done, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of Jehovah's hand double for all her sins. Verse 3, the voice of him who cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of God. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight a highway in the desert for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked places shall be made level. And the rough places smooth. Verse 5. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of God has spoken. Now the messenger has a prophetic mandate upon his life. And that is, he is going to declare the coming of the Lord. He is going to make every crooked path straight. Every hill will be flattened. Every valley will be lifted up. Every rough places will be made smooth for the Lord's coming. And that is the assignment and mandate upon the spirit of Elijah. And it was manifested in John the Baptist's life. He was the messenger, as he said. Because he preached repentance. He predicted the soon coming Messiah. He says the one coming after me is greater than I am. I'm not even worthy to open his shoelace. He's the one who baptized people. Even Jesus. He's the one that when Christ came out of Jordan, witnessed Father declaring and affirming the Son. This is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. He's the one who witnessed the, the dove, the Spirit of God coming and sitting on Jesus. He witnessed. Why? Because the mandate upon his life was to make his path straight. To make Messiah's path straight. 
John was faithful to his calling till the very end. He was the messenger. He came preaching repentance. Hallelujah. Bible says in Matthew 3 verse 1 and 3. Gospel of Matthew chapter 3 verse 1 and 3. In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by prophet Isaiah saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord make his path straight. He spoke repentance. He turned the heart of wicked sons to the father who is eternal. Because the mandate upon Elijah was that he will turn the heart of the sons back to the father. And what did he do? Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. And Bible said they came flocking in. Whole Judea repented. They were baptized. He turned the heart of wicked men. Disobedient sons to the father. He fulfilled his mandate. But I strongly believe that the spirit and power of Elijah is still yearning to fulfill his complete mandate. Why? Because he was sent to prepare a way for the Lord's coming. And the Lord is still coming for the second time. What was his mandate to prepare the Lord's coming? Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Make rough places smooth. Let valleys be lifted up and mountains be flattened down. And if the Lord still has to come, he still got to raise the spirit of Elijah in the church. It has not fulfilled his mandate and purpose. And I will tell you now. Bible speaks of it. Let's turn back to Malachi chapter 4. Let's turn back to. Now we we put aside John. Everybody understand John now. Because the scholars believe. The Elijah mandate was finished. Done and dusted with John the Baptist. Amen. We went through a journey about understanding. Who John was. Yes he carried the prophetic word. Hallelujah. He had the spirit of Elijah. But the mandate of Elijah is yet to be completed. Malachi chapter 4. Listen to this. Verse 5. We read that. Behold I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Before. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. What is that great and dreadful day of the Lord? Because Malachi is now speaking a prophetic word of another prophet. And that is found in Joel chapter 2 verse 31. The book of Joel chapter 2 verse 31. Listen to this. The book of Joel chapter 2 verse 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness. The moon into blood. Before the great. And the dreadful day of the Lord come. He says I will send you the spirit of Elijah. Before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. What is the great and dreadful day of the Lord? It's the second coming of the Lord. It's the judgment seat of God. When the sun will be turned into darkness. And the moon into blood. Let me be honest with you. It has not yet come. The Lord's dreadful day has not yet come. It means Elijah still yearns to fulfill his mandate. I will send you Elijah before the dreadful day. The great and dreadful day of the Lord. And the great and dreadful day of the Lord is the judgment of God upon the earth. When the sun will turn dark and the moon blood. We have those signs coming out. We have seen the blood moons rising like never before. 
Hallelujah. It's so amazing how it's blending into the second coming that we are going through in our Wednesday's teaching. Hallelujah. So the great and dreadful day of the Lord has not yet come. It means that as much as Elijah was manifested in John the Baptist, the spirit of Elijah still yearns to fulfill his mandate and purpose because the great and dreadful day of the Lord has not yet come. And the Lord is still coming. Hallelujah. If he is still coming... He is going to raise a messenger to prepare his way. Hallelujah. So we conclude the prophetic word of Malachi has yet to be fulfilled. Are you with me? Based on two powerful proofs on the scripture that the Lord is still coming for his bride. And before he comes, he is going to send a messenger. And that messenger is who? Elijah. I will send a messenger. And then secondly, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, which is the judgment of God, earth has yet to see the judgment of God. So based on these two powerful proofs from the scripture, Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, is yet to be released upon the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Everybody fine with that? Just laid a foundation for the word. Now turn your Bible with me to Luke chapter 1. Let's understand. Now we, we know the John the Baptist was the spirit, manifestation of the spirit of Elijah. Are you with me? He was a manifestation of the spirit and power of Elijah even though he was not Elijah. He was John, but he prepared the way of the Lord and he moved in the spirit and power of Elijah. Luke, the gospel of Luke, there's no other way to understand the mandate of the spirit than John, better than John a Baptist. Because John a Baptist lived and breathed in the spirit of Elijah. Luke chapter 1, verse 13. This is... Angel speaking to Zacharias upon the birth of John. Bible says the angel said to him, Do not fear, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. You shall have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Hallelujah. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and he shall neither drink wine nor strong drinks. And he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he shall turn away, turn many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. Verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. These four verses define Eight powerful assignments upon the spirit of Elijah. And John fulfilled each one of them. Firstly we find, the Bible says that he will bring joy and gladness to people. He will be called John. And he will bring great gladness and joy to people. And let me be honest with you. Church remains a place that God has ordained to be a lighthouse in the dark world. People are walking around with fake smiles, but there's no joy, no satisfaction in their lives. There is no peace. They seek peace and entertainment and excitement from the world, but it cannot fill them. 
they spend their money and still empty inside. Why? Because the remnant church is the messenger that is endured with the spirit and power of Elijah and there is joy in the presence of God and nowhere else. Joy unspeakable. Joy you cannot you cannot purchase the joy you cannot fathom the joy you cannot understand but those who love him they can go through hell with a smile on their faces knowing that they will come out of it and when they do that there is the manifestation of the spirit and power of Elijah upon their lives Bible says he will bring joy and gladness to people. The spirit of Elijah and spirit and power of Elijah within him bring joy and gladness to people. That's why John could come in the front and rebuke the nation. He would say, you brood of wipers. And they will still love him and cherish him. Why? They'll be still coming, rejoicing, getting baptized. He will rebuke them. Scold them, call them names. I'll, share, I'll highlight that with you. Why? Because it, it represented a physical, a spiritual fatherhood. Elijah, Elijah becomes the ultimate picture of a spiritual fatherhood. We're going to share that maybe next week. What it is all about. Secondly, we find the assignment about, uh, upon John the Baptist and the assignment upon the spirit and power of Elijah is he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Hallelujah. He shall be great in the sight of the... He will bring joy and he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Why? Now the remnant church is the great is great in the sight of the Lord why because she is purchased with his blood she bears his name upon her forehead he treasured her that he will send her his only begotten son to redeem her the church is the greatest institution or the body upon the face of the earth. Why? Because it represents the greater God than any other God. It's a representation of the living God who created heavens and the earth and the universe and everything in it. He shall be great. Demanded an assignment of the spirit of Elijah is to empower people to be great. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That the greatness of God unfolds in their lives. He will be great. He will be great in the sight of the Lord. Three. He shall not drink wine or any strong drinks. Hallelujah. The remnant church is consecrated and is not lured or entertained into the desires of the flesh. But she has kept herself pure. She does not desire wine or strong drinks which represent the desires of the flesh. She's out of her grave and she has gotten rid of her grave clothes that have kept her in bondage. We have no other desire to serve the Lord. We have no other desire besides the serve, to serve the Lord. And there is no desire for any strong lust of the flesh within us. And that is the church that God is raising, is endured with the spirit and power of Elijah. The Bible says he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. The fourth assignment upon him. The remnant church is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit because she is mandated to preach the gospel. Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, And the Spirit of God will come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Bible says John was filled with the Holy Spirit. The church is given the Spirit of God 
for one purpose. Not to be more holier than others and look down at others and be filled with spiritual pride. Not to be more successful than anybody else and think of big ourselves. Bible says the Spirit of God will come upon you and you will be my witnesses. You will be my messengers. Spirit of God was given for one purpose and it is to witness. Every other need he meets. Hallelujah. You are filled with the Holy Spirit to witness. And if you are not witnessing, you are not a messenger. You are grieving the Spirit of God. Because that was the only purpose it was given to them, to you. Spirit of God will come upon you and you will be my... You will be my witnesses. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit. The church is trusted with the Holy Spirit. Church is endured with the power of the Holy Spirit. To do what? To be witnesses, to be a messenger like Elijah, like John the Baptist. Five, he shall turn many sons of Israel to their God. The church is mandated to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. To turn the hearts of wicked men and women to their God. And if we are not turning the heart of people to God, then we are grieving the spirit of God. We are grieving the spirit of Elijah that they so rightfully trusted to us as a church. Because the mandate upon him was he would turn the hearts of this and he will turn many sons of Israel to their God. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Let them hear what I have teach you. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And behold, I'll be with you until the end of the age. The mandate and assignment of Elijah that he shall turn many sons to their God. Six, he shall turn the hearts of the father to the children. Let me be honest with you. The presence of God, the church, remains a place where the anointing of God flows. And the yokes are broken. Turning the hearts of the fathers to the sons and sons to the fathers. Restoration can only take place in the presence of God. You can watch a series or soapies and movies and do things at home. But if God is not involved in your marriage, you are down. You're down for a fall. Why? Because only the presence and power of God, the Spirit of God, can restore what you can't. So every effort you make, it's good to make efforts, but get God involved in. Let God get involved in your marriage as well. It's good you speak good to your children and trying your level best, and you're still struggling and failing. Let me be honest with you. Let God get involved in their lives. Do something for them to be in the presence of God. Why? Because the mandate and assignment of Elijah upon your life. That he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and sons to the fathers. That there is going to be a restoration in the families. There is going to be a restoration in the marriages. That God will restore those relationships. He was endured with that power, that spirit to restore. That's why in Matthew 17, even the disciple says, isn't Elijah supposed to come and restore all things? Why? Because the spirit carry restoration within him. And God has trusted that spirit to the church. Are you with me? We are the messengers. We are the messenger who are called to prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. We are the messenger who in the spirit realm flattening every high place. We are the messengers who are declaring and raising up the valleys. We are the messenger who are speaking life into dead bones. 
We are the messenger proclaiming his gospel and turning the hearts of the wicked men and women to their God. We are the people filled with the spirit and power of Elijah. The Bible says he will turn the hearts of the disobedience to the wisdom of just. We're not taken by, by the wisdom of man. I've seen some couples, when they go through marriages, challenges, they go to these psychologists and all these things to mess up their marriages even more. We're not dependent on the wisdom of man. Yes, you need doctor, but doctor is not your healer. He says, they, they, listen to this, he says, he will turn the disobedient to the wisdom of just. Who is just? God is just. He says that the wisdom will not come from the world. The source is not the world. Your job might provide for you the, the money to take care of your needs, but your, your boss and your job is not your provider. God is your provider. And if you treat him like one, you will see the blessings of him flowing in your life. He says he will turn the disobedient heart to the wisdom of the just. God is just. That our wisdom comes from him. The spirit and of Elisha is not dependent on the wisdom and the counsel of man. No, it's dependent on the Holy Spirit. Because those who are led by the spirit of God are called the sons of God. We are the sons raised, endured with the power and the spirit of Elisha. Our dependency is not on the wisdom of man our dependency on the wisdom of just who has called us to be just who has justified us by faith God is raising a church a church that is messenger a church that has a word of restoration a church that is dependent on the wisdom of God a church that is endowed with the Holy Spirit to be a witness a church that is filled with joy and gladness so first when we come to church it's like we have washed our faces with lemon juice stiff put some joy on your face you're walking in an environment where God is trusting us with the power and the spirit of Elijah. You're not taken by the temptations of the enemy. Our wine and strong drinks and, and the lust of the flesh. We are people endured with power from above. If he's great, we bear his name. His name makes us great. Hallelujah. Eight. He says, we'll make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Hallelujah. He will make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Shall move in the spirit and power of Elijah and he will make people ready a people prepared for the Lord. Hallelujah. The, the my, my life vision or the mission statement is preparing the remnant. That's my life vision. God has unfolded upon my life. I'm not called to revive or heal people. Maybe God will use me one day. I'm not a revivalist guy. Are you with me? I'm a guy who's called to prepare the people. I'm called to equip in power. That's my call. Amen. The Bible says he will make ready a people prepared for the Lord. He'll make ready you and I. I are called as a church to prepare for the Lord's coming. To equip, equip and empower people for the Lord's coming. That's what we are called to do as a church. While well, we're still setting up our own futures and plan and agenda, there's a greater mandate upon your life. And your own people empower them. Hallelujah. 
When you empower them, you're, in tapping, you're tapping into the spirit and power of Elijah. How explosive that can be. Every time you bring joy, you, you joy unspeakable on, on your faces. You give a good smile, put aside your bitterness. You're tapping into a very powerful spur. Hallelujah. 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 Nine, he shall move in the spirit and power of Elijah. That the Elijah mandate will be upon his life. A messenger. A messenger. He will be a messenger. Crying out, calling forth. Calling for things that, that they are as they, the things that are not as they, they are. He's calling for things. He's exalting. He's exalting valleys. People stuck in valley. He's empowering them, equipping them, preparing them, lifting them up. Flattening every mountain top. Some of us need to come down from that mountain. People are getting tired to look up to us. We need to come down. I got my neck muscles still cramped up by looking up to people who are too high. Please come down. Every crooked path be made straight. Every rough path be made straight, smooth. Hallelujah. Every mountain be flattened and every valley be lifted up. Let God exalt you, my brother. Not your own pride, your own skills, your careers, or your experience, and how long you've been a spiritual person. No, let God exalt you. God resists the proud and He gives grace to the humble. He favors the humble. But God exalts you. If you're a mountain that cannot be moved, God's going to flatten you, my brother. Humble yourself in the presence of God. My time is up. Hallelujah. We're going to carry on next week from where we left.